Mary Purnell, the angel Joe Dunn found in his golden years. We'd been seeing each other for almost two years. It all started with, well, weekdays I start cleaning the gym at dawn, before my shift at the diner. Joey always came in early, just a little after I got there. He used to say it was the best time for the worst task of the day. Oh, I know exactly what he meant. Paperwork. He just hated it. But that was just him. Instead of putting off the things he couldn't stand, he did them as soon as possible. One morning, he saw me crying. I was having a rough day and... <sighs> and he took advantage of your vulnerability, right? No. We're talking about the nicest man I've ever met. He pointed at the coffee machine. You need a cup of joe and some fresh air. That was the first of many cups on the rooftop. Which is where Dunn seduced you. That word is a bit too much, Mr. Blackstone. You might be too young to understand this, but real love has little to do with seduction. One day, we realized those rooftop coffees were the best part of our day. So we began to spend more time together. But you never told anyone. Why did you keep it secret? For Sonia's sake. She and Joey drifted apart after her mother's death. He was afraid that our relationship would only make matters worse. Until one day, on the rooftop, we realized just how serious our relationship was, and we decided to turn those moments into a lifetime. So, he asked you to marry him? Yes, of course. He gave me the wedding ring, and we decided to tell the world. He said he needed to share that happiness with his little girl. Turns out, he wasn't that happy after all. What about Yale? Wasn't he like a son to him? Maybe you already noticed, I, I have a slight cold. I really should be heading home. Maybe you should cover your neck. I lost my scarf a while back, not sure where. And now, if you'll excuse me, that's my bus stop. A pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Blackstone. Not I'm much taller than Dunn, and I can barely reach the noose. There's no way Dunn hanged himself. Not on his own, at least. done just because he wanted to call off the fight? I always knew Bobby had issues. But I never thought he'd go that far. I couldn't say. In my line of work, 
You really shouldn't jump to conclusions. But the chest expander, the box in his locker, the marks on my father's neck. It all leads to him. In any case, that doesn't change a thing. It does, actually. Now we know he didn't kill himself. My father's still dead, and you still haven't found Bobby Yale. Nothing has changed. Opening the safe and finding my father's will won't help us achieve anything. So please hurry. Time's wasting. Sonia's indifference never ceased to amaze me. But most importantly, why was she so opposed to Yale? John Blacksad? I think I owe you an apology. Apology accepted. But what exactly are you apologizing for? <laughs> uh, listen, I don't think my fellow workers treated you with the respect you deserve. I'm so sorry they wrinkled your suit. The thing is, uh, they didn't know we shared a common goal. Bobby Yale. I want to find him and get to the bottom of this as much as you do, Mr. Blacksad. So please. Kindly accept my invitation. Why not share our findings? Come on. Of course. You don't mind me riding in this fancy car with a wrinkled suit, do you? Oh, I think you look mighty dapper, Mr. Blacksad. Although, if those wrinkles were to rub off on me... I always play it nice and safe. Thank you, Black Sad. You won't regret this. So let's cut to the chase. I need Bobby Yale to fight Stone. There's just too much money at stake. So, I'm offering you my help to find Yale. Let's work together. What kind of help do you need? A simple exchange of information. You're a good detective. And I, well, let's just say I have my own ways of making people talk. I think I'll have to pass this time. Why? What? Do my own ways scare you? Please, hear me out. Let's say I bet a beer that we find Yale in three days, and you bet a beer that we don't. In three days, one of us has to buy the other a beer. Is that so bad? We're simply two grown men using our money and free will to conduct a small private exchange. And most importantly, we're not hurting anyone. So, yeah, I run a gambling business. What's so bad about that? It's immoral, for starters. Immoral? I'll tell you what's immoral. The way our government is ruining America. We live in a so-called free country. A place where honest people can make a living, provided they don't hurt anybody. We're not communists. Well, at least I'm not. I would have never thought otherwise. 
As for me, I'm not either. Ah, well then, you see, we're all among friends. In any case, that's not my point. The government betrays our nation's values by passing communist laws that forbid an honest man like me to make a living without hurting a soul. And that, Mr. Black said, is just wrong. I'd even say it's unconstitutional. Do you get my point now? Gambling is also immoral. Oh boy. Did you hear anything I just said? Anyway, when the government passes these laws, there's only one legitimate weapon the people can wield. The same weapon that turned America into a great nation. Civil disobedience. So, as the proud American that I am, it's my duty to disobey. Sure. But there's no room for your ways in civil disobedience. My ways? Oh, I know what you're getting at. But what's past is past. I wasn't always a boss, you know. No, sir. I started at the bottom. When Lucky Blitzen ran this show, that good for nothing. His was a reign of terror, extortion, violence, you know, that sort of unpleasant thing. When I took over, I decided I'd make people want to do my bidding. Not out of fear, but out of gratitude. I decided to help people so they would help me. That beating your thugs gave me was really helpful. Thank you so much. Ah, ah, ah. Those poor bastards didn't even know you were a detective, that you were on our side. Maybe at first, but when they tied me up and beat the socks off me, they knew very well who I was. Seriously? That goes against my rules. Who was it? It was just Wilson. That bastard. Don't you worry. I will have a serious talk with him. I cannot tolerate this behavior. Please, accept my apologies, Mr. Blacksad. You see, a lot of people work for me. Many families depend on my business. Not only that, St. Christopher's Hospice practically lives on my donations. The widows of my late employees are set for life. Their kids get free schooling. The cops leave me alone because they know my business doesn't hurt anyone. On the contrary. And, ah, it looks like we're here. Yale's apartment? <laughs> I told you, I'm on your side. Go ahead, search the place. I'll wait down here. When you're done, maybe you'll change your mind and share your findings with me. Or not. It's your call, Mr. Blacksad. I'll make sure you're suitably compensated. Wilson, come here. 